because fitness is always the ultimate explanation. The proximate content of my everything mechanism can be something which is not related to fitness. So you're saying so you're saying that evolutionary psychology can necessarily kind of one of the uh, uh, kind of uh, findings is that kind of because Europeans are superior, no, they are no, more no. fit. No, no, no. I wasn't saying that. I, that. Evolutionary psychology doesn't talk about race. Yes. What I was saying was, they make a distinction between ultimate and proximate. Okay. So when it comes to, you rightly pointed out, Darwin was wrong in thinking that military might or colonization makes you fitter, right? Making that conflation. However, what I'm pointing out, is that you still have to, you, you still can justify that if you link the fitness to a proximate me mechanism which leads to the fitness. Okay. So for example, uh, when you took over, when the English took over that part and they went through their naval engagements, whatever, they survived and reproduced and passed on their alleles. Okay. So they were, Darwin did have a point there. No, but like... Do you get, uh, do you get me? But, but, but I mean, one, maybe what, what I should have expressed it as is that using the word superior confers a value judgment which is absent from yes, evolutionary yes, biology yes. And, evo yeah. and natural yes. selection. Yes, but here's the point. The fact-value distinction is not something that a lot of even scientifically literal, literate people and academics know about. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm not so sure that's true. Like, I, 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 if, I, if, I, if I spoke to uh, kind of bi most biologists and I asked them, like, you know, uh, if a group of organisms is, you know, uh, be are better at surviving and reproducing in one uh, environment, does that make them superior? Like, they, they kind of look at me like I'm but, stupid. No, they, they'd no, be like, well, no, come on, like, it means that they're fitter. They wouldn't as assign that kind of uh, value to it, like uh, some sort of grand, uh, lofty notion of uh, master, master race yeah, or but superior. What you have to understand is that biologists are human beings and when we believe like some people sadly believe that what they are actually doing is not working with a model but working within what they believe to be literally true then what happens is the fact value distinction becomes blurred for example is, is it blurred within like you know mainstream biologists today though it can be well, and i'll in, give a in, point i'll give a point in, here in the yeah? example that you've given right so dennis noble he points out this type of uh, value that's given to the selfish gene and he corrects Richard Dawkins on that, that these genes are selfish. Although Richard Dawkins himself clarifies what that means. Now the fact is, if we as biologists, if we go out there and we believe that what we're doing is literally searching for the truth and we found this thing which is actually true, as a human being you would add value to that. So social Darwinism, it didn't come a hundred years before Darwin, it came when Darwin was alive for the reason that people find it very hard to make the fact-value distinction, even academically intelligent people. Uh, 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 yeah, we're within the 18th century, like, of course, like social Darwinism as an ideology was alive, and yeah, and, and today there'll be some people who think, you know, poor people are poor because they're inferior, and and, 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 and like, it, like because you know, their parents will pass on that inferiority. There, there'll be people who believe that, sure, but that that's that still wouldn't be like a well-regarded. And that's or, or, because it's that, a that's not, but that, that's not, that's not, that's not part of like you know uh, biology today. So. Like, look, there, if, look, if, if you're trying to dissuade people for, or, or like cast doubt on a kind of mainstream biology today, there's no point in you talking about that. No, I'm not casting doubt on biology. All I'm saying is that the fact-value distinction, which exists in the fact-value distinction, which should exist in human beings, it doesn't always exist. And even in academia, you will find, and this is why philosophers have to correct those scientists. They sometimes don't understand. For example, even in our advertising. You have sometimes a scientist who says, this is natural, therefore it's good, right? So the fact-value distinction is a problem which even some academics don't understand. Sure, but it, it also gets called out by other academics and there's quite, does, quite a good it does. self it's, it's, So it's not like a rampant problem that's like, means that you, we, we can't like, you know, ha have not, a good, good look, amount of faith within I'm biology. not saying we don't trust scientists. Okay. What I'm saying is we unveil what they are actually doing to what the public thinks they're doing. Okay, all right, but like, let, 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 okay, I, I mean, I, I feel like a while ago we were going to talk about kind of uh, the example of uh, why you trust um, a paternity test to tell you how recent yes, the ancestry is, and, but you wouldn't uh, apply the same reasoning of uh, um, two kind of two different species. Sure. So yeah, so let, then, let, let, so let's let, go let, about that very carefully and let's yes, not get diverted. Okay, fine. Paternity test. Yeah. Now, when a paternity test happens, you're there, he's there, we want to find out who the father is. Yes. Human, human, human. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Where's the assumption of common ancestry? Well, like, what, 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 more, so more keen, more, more important than like observing that we're all humans is that you observe how similar are the genetic sequences are. Okay, so would you do a paternity test between you two and a dog? Um, you, what, what you could, what you could feasibly do is you could, you could, uh, yeah, you could take two humans, get their DNA, compare it to a dog, and then uh, look and say, and then look and uh, kind of ask uh, which human being kind of diverted from a dog earlier. You could do that. Right. So that particular. Or, wh or which human being probably so diverted from a dog earlier. So is that actually an example of a paternity test? It would be a modified paternity nope. test. A paternity test is who is the parent. Sure, but that, that's what you use it for. But you could use the same no, principle but sir, what's for, for here anything is this? else. I think you understand. The, 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 pr the principle I, is I the same. I think you're understanding the problem here. When it comes to a paternity test, parent, human, parent, human, child, human, Homo sapien, Homo sapien, Homo sapien. We already know they are all part of Homo sapiens. Now we try and find out how they're genetically related. Okay, okay but you're, right. you're trying to find no, out who the father is. How, how, how do you find to, out who the father when is? When it comes to human chimpanzee ancestry or one strip of DNA and another strip of DNA, we know examples of where DNA is very, very similar but it's not due to common ancestry. But we know that that's so, less likely. That's we, know, we know that that's less likely. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on a second. That is homology. Yes. When you go out with the assumption that these two species are related because of so and so uh, DNA, genetic uh, morphology, whatever. Paternity says we know they're all Homo sapiens. So that's a okay. false analogy. Okay, uh, let, let, let's. Um, Do you get it? Uh, I, I think I, I think no, no, I, yeah, I think I get what you're saying. But like, let, let's go a bit a little bit more carefully. Sure, sure, sure. So the. Why, why does a paternity test tell you whether one human is the father or another human is the father? What do you look at? Similarity. Okay, yes. And so, what's the reason... We're not what, 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 ancestry. Yeah, yeah. What, what's the reason why one, uh, hu one man having uh, a, a, a genome that's more similar to the child in question provides evidence that that man is the father? Okay, let me give you a counterfactual to tease it out. Oh, well, I mean, can't, can't, okay, fine, fine. fine. Okay. Can a paternity test show that the child being tested is a completely different species? Can a paternity test show that the child being tested is a completely different species? That, that would generally... Uh, uh, well, no, that, that's not a question being asked. Yes, the, exactly. The, the only question being asked is how similar is the gene? Exactly. That's okay. the point. Another counterfactual. Well, Another counterfactual. Leave the paternity test to your side. Can have you answered my question, though? I'm about to. Okay. Can two different parents of whatever species having a common ancestor, can it be shown logically yes or no that both things are possible that they have a recent common ancestor? So can you repeat that? So let me break it down a bit more. Paternity test, we already know human, human, human. Yeah, yeah, we know that. And now seen. we're just trying to see who's more closely related. Yes. Homology of human chimpanzee to your human pig or the tree of life, we don't already know that they're related. Yeah. We're yeah, assuming that they're related mm -hmm. because of this and then we go out and try and verify. No, no, I, I disagree. Okay, with go that. on, tell okay. me why it's different. So, but because the rest is mean, circular okay, reasoning. Okay, so. Do you get it though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get it. So, the first thing, the first observation we make is how DNA behaves in organisms when they reproduce yep. and how like kind of uh, uh, the, the, the genes uh, mutate over time randomly and there's crossover and so we observe uh, how that happens and that it happens at an average rate okay and since we observe that it's happening now we extrapolate uh, uh, that it will have also happened in previous generations of organisms because that's the model which best fits the evidence at hand. And so, given that we 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 and so given that we believe we kind of uh, infer that kind of uh, this uh, gradual mutation has happened, like going back and back back in the generations, we assume that the uh, on average the more different uh, two kind of um, uh, two genomes are the further back they will have diverged. And so obviously there are, there are certain things that can make the uh, rate change more or less quickly, like uh, found, uh, the, the, the founder effect and uh, the, uh, the presence of mutagens. But, but kind of like uh, other things being equal, kind of uh, th th that's one of the principles involved in, uh, in, um, in uh, 
in in uh, why in, in when you kind of do this kind of these phylogenetic trees and when you try and like test whether um, kind of uh, how how closely related uh, I'll try and try and find out how close which which two organisms are more closely related and and, and you use the same you use the same reasoning with a paternity test because in the paternity test you look at two you look at three people's DNA and you and you and you say that one you say that one of them is the, the child you look at three people's DNA yes. So you already know they're part of the same species. True. Which is why you cannot compare paternity test to homology. No, no, but 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 the, but but, let, but you need to like. But I I already explained the uh, principle though. The principle isn't isn't particular to a to a certain species. The in, the, the principle is particular to DNA and no, genetics but, but, in no, general. But what you're doing is this. It's I'm, a general principle I'm being out, uh, applied I'm to one species. I'm pointing out this analogy. Do you see the difference between the two? It, it's not a, it's not a relevant this analogy. Okay, so there is a disanalogy, but you're saying well, it's not relevant. Well, 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 so, uh, in this, this okay, analogy, well, we're getting somewhere it's, now. It's, it's, a dif it's a difference. So why isn't it a it's, relevant disanalogy? It, it, it's, it's not relevant because, like, the the DNA, you know, like both 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 species have DNA, and the DNA behaves similarly, kind of in both the species. It's not as if um, it's, it's not as if uh, kind of um, uh, I don't know, like uh, in 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 human be in in the uh, chimps uh. Kind of uh, the um, uh, sort of self-repairing uh, uh, genes aren't active, like the ones that, like during mitosis, they do they, they check for errors. Uh, you still have those error-checking uh, enzymes, so you can still apply kind of many of the same um, kind of uh, assumptions about the rate of mutation, uh, the average rate of mutation, generation on generation. So, like, it's 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 not particular to human beings. It's particular to all kind of. Uh, like uh, you know, sexually reproducing uh, mammals, and you, and you and you can and you can adjust the uh, kind of assumptions to make it uh, to to then include um, uh, um, like uh, non like kind of uh, asexually or like multiple sexually reproducing uh, organisms. But then it becomes like more speculative, and you have a wider confidence interval. You've got more variance in your so predictions. So why don't we do this to ease it out? Say there's a paternity test. Yeah. What are the potential results? He is the father, or he is the father, or they're both not the father. Uh, well, in, in fact, you just you get a confidence in, interval on a paternity test. Okay. So because like if you give if you do, so, do if you do a paternity, te a paternity test on a niece, you get a in, unsure result. So you can get uncertain results. Okay. So either, you get a confidence interval. Either we're not sure, or he is the father, or he's not the well, father. Well, no, your 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 degree of belief is on a continuum. Fine, fine. But when you try to use that as an analogy for human chimp, you have another variable, which is about different species. No, but if but we can observe so like so how the how the genetics of those so species behave. This, this is actually a false analogy. No, it, but but that, that assumption is, is is justified because you can observe. Uh, how the, the rate of mutation of, of chimps generation on generation, you can observe whether they have the same enzymes uh, repairing uh, certain mutations. You mean between chimps or between chimps and humans? I mean, within. With, I mean, I'll, I'll repeat from the top. Like, chimp and you can you can observe whether chimps have the same uh, rate of um, average rate of uh, uh, what's the word. Um, uh, muta mutation, generation on generation, and you can observe whether they have the same kind of cellular machinery to try and repair certain mutations, and so you can and so you can uh, test whether and, and then your model can take that into account, and so you can do an adapted paternity test using the same basic principle, which is that uh, you know the more the more kind of uh, different the uh, gene the two genomes are, the less uh, the, the, the the less recent they had a common ancestor. Again, look the analogy that you using here about the paternity test, it has another dimension which is about we don't actually know whether they are from the same species or whether they're from different species. With this, we all know that they're human. So it's just a complete disanalogy, no matter but, how you try and re-engineer it. Uh, but, no, but what, what's, what, why, why, what's the relevance that stops it from, I mean, what, 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 what is what's it? What's the relevance? What, what, no, what the is relevance it, yeah, what is, is it that this. stops it from working? The relevance is this, the relevance is, when it comes to a paternity test, yes. we're not trying to determine if they're homo sapiens. You could do. We're not though, you know we're not. Which no, paternity no, but we, test we, in we, the world? We, we, we don't need to, but you because could. Because we already you could, know. No, but you could easily, like, okay. what, what, what you're but doing I'm with a paternity the, test, the paternity you, kind of, you, look, you look at their between genes. between humans. Yes. Human, human, human. Yeah. We're not trying to work out our species here. 
human chimpanzee ancestry, or, and this is very important, the kangaroo and the placental saber-toothed tiger, it's not the same thing. Okay. No, but, but, you get but, it. But, no, but what, what you're, you're like... Uh, so, so, here, here, here's what solves it. In okay. fact, the results no, no, came yeah, 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 too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the results here are not related, closely related, or completely different species. Yeah, yeah. It, so here, you won't get those results. No, no. So, what, what a paternity test measures is how close, uh, how similar the genomes are. Of, and then of, we, and then of we, the then same we, species. No, but then... Yeah, of but, the same species. But that's what we use it for, but we don't need to use it for that. Of course you do. No, no, what you going to do, test a dog and see if it's the son of a human? Of course you're not no, 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 but you can test whether kind of one human is, is, has, has a more recent common ancestor to that dog than another human. You can do that. Well, hang you on, could. hang on. You just need to modify it hang in on. a kind of... That's not paternity. And you know that. It, a human being is not going to be a parent of a dog. Yeah, obviously it's not going to be a parent of a dog. And no, a human, no, but, but, but and the, a human the, the, being, you have, to go, you have to remember going back, no. if anything, from an evolutionary perspective, it would be like cousins okay, of but, some but, sort. Sure, sure, but a, 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 a paternity test... Or maybe the dog is going to be a, a nephew, a, I don't no, know. No, 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 but a paternity test doesn't actually directly measure paternity. It, it directly measures how similar two, two uh, genomes are. Okay, so and then you infer from that okay. which one is, is more likely to be the human. Yeah. Okay, so and, so, and, so, and so that's perfectly analogous so to let me, let me kind of you, you, you look at a, which has the more similar common paternity, ancestor. Can you ancestry. do a paternity test for me, right? I'm going to give you three different genomes. I'm not going to tell you what species they are. Genome 1, Genome 2, and Genome 3. Yes. You've seen that these two genomes, genome B and genome C, are near identical. Yes. You're going to infer that, that, that they have a more recent common ancestor. Yeah. But if that's due to homoplasy, there's not. True, but homoplasy is much less likely than the oh, uh, than sir, them having a common sir, ancestor. But for you and, and, and I can and I and you can say no, that but, based but, on but, evidence and reasoning. There's a good to, reason to say that. But for you to say homoplasy is much more less likely, you have yes. to give no evidence. Yeah, and there is evidence for why homoplasy is less likely, and that's because kind of. Uh, when you when you mutate, kind of uh, one base pair turns into another base pair in general. That's that's one of the kind of mo most uh, way, kind of common. When you show ho ho homoplasy is less likely, don't do it in the frame of common ancestry, because sure. that would be so. Fine, reason. fine, no, no. All you need to know in order to know that homoplasy is less like like random homoplasy is less likely what is, than. What's, what's, I've never heard so, so so so. All, all, yeah, like, let, let's stop using the drug. Let's be more clear. So all you need to do in order to conclude that two organisms having a very similar genome by pure chance, even though they aren't close, even though they don't have a close common ancestor, all you need to do to work out that that uh, outcome is much less likely than the outcome that than the outcome of two organisms having the same uh, uh, a similar genome being because uh, they have a more recent common ancestor. All you need to know. All you need to do to get through that is, is look at the properties of genomes, uh, of genes and, how, and DNA and how it mutates. But sir, here's the thing. That's the only properties you need. Let's tease this out practically. Yeah. You don't know anything about any other biological life. You have three genomes in front of you. B, A, B, C. B and C are near identical. Yes. You infer common ancestry. Yes. Can you be totally wrong? Yes, but it's unlikely. It's less likely no, than the no, other. No, but for you to say it's less likely, we now have to make a separate argument for that. Yeah, and I, 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 I was in the process this, of that. Yeah. Even from a naturalistic perspective, if you assume naturalism, and we don't assume any form of supernaturalism, even from that perspective, the same ecological niche can give rise to the same functions and genetics. Okay, but that, that's not that's not the, 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 the reasoning I was going for. I know you weren't. Yeah, oh, well, so, like, the, the, the reason well, why... Well, the reason why I'm pointing out is to show you that you could be completely wrong about that. So I, I feel like I've, I've just kind of missed what you were saying. I'm sorry. A, B, C. Yes. B and C are near identical. Yes. You infer common ancestry. Yes. Based on 99% certainty. Yeah. Or you could be totally wrong. Yeah, I could be totally wrong, but it would be... Yeah, but I have good reason to believe that the outcome of me being wrong is, is less likely than the outcome that it just like happened by chance okay. and I am wrong. Okay, okay, so and, explain and like, that to me in a non-circular way. Okay, so... Uh, a explain huge, why homoplasy is very unlikely in a non-circular way without assuming homology. Sure, um, so what we what we observe is that um, uh, kind of all, all kind of uh, organisms, or in particular mammals, since we're most interested in the human chimp example, all mammals uh, have DNA and uh, 
the DNA in these mammals um, kind of behaves in particular ways, and it behaves pretty similarly in all in all uh, mammals. And so it, it has it has a kind of um, rate. This, it has rates of mutation that are comparable across different mammalian species. And um, so there are, there are many different ways that. Uh, that a, um, a, a group of species, that, 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 that's a group, sorry, a, that a population could, that, that, that there are, so a, a population has a, uh, an allele distribution, okay, uh, like a, a, a distribution, of, like all their genomes, basically, all the genomes of, their, of that population, there are many ways that that could uh, develop over time or change over time, okay, the, the, and the, the space of a uh, different, um, the space of uh, different possible uh, kind of uh, um, uh, you know uh, the you know the the, the, the space of um, that, that, those possibilities is very big, and so the chance of you kind of happening to converge to another one uh, uh, to, to another kind of population, another um, kind of uh, species that you aren't closely related to, is 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 much less likely. Um, yeah, but you, have, you haven't explained why homoplasy is li less likely outside of the framework of homology. No, but the, I've done it within the framework of homology. Haven't you I? Get my point. No, no, haven't I only done it within the framework of observing how how uh, but but how DNA behaves? Your observation assumes homology. No, I, my obs I feel my observations are only assuming how DNA behaves, or rather, we've observed how DNA has, has behaved, and then we're kind of. Uh, um, and then we're like looking at which module fits the evidence because best. Because if, if you if you try to show homoplasy is less likely, assuming homology, all you've done is circular reasoning. No, I, but I, I haven't. All I've assumed is well, not assumed. All, all, all that you've uh, done is like looked looked at how DNA behaves and how genetics works. Yes. Yeah. And well, and, and once you know, and, and, and once you know that, kind of you, you do know that like just statistically and probabilistically, the chance of uh, Two kind of um, species, uh, you know, uh, that aren't that weren't closely related. That don't have a, that don't, that don't have a that don't have a recent common ancestor. But how do you know they don't have a common recent ancestor? But because we're, no, no, we're 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 asking the example: could could this happen, and how likely is it? So in order for us to calculate that or do a thumbnail calculation of that, we have to assume it. That's the point. So no, no, the but, point no, is, no, but now you're asking me how how no, do you no, calculate James, something? James, the point is this: no matter which way you cut the onion. It is at best human chimpanzees do anything in the tree of life, an assumption which has a counterfactual which can come up, which is homoplasy. At best, that's all we no, have. No, okay, but we know we know that that homoplasy is is, is much less likely than um, kind no, of common again, ancestry. Again, we're gonna, that's going to be circular reasoning if you try it, to justify it. It, it won't be. And the person you uh, you mentioned earlier, Elliot Sober, he, he'd have a very good explanation for why uh, that that's the case, and it would be based on a kind of. Uh, and there'll be various ways you, you can look at it from frequentism and basis. All, all I'm saying is, and this is what I'm trying to make clear, I'm not saying anything different to Elliot Sober. Elliot Sober believes human chimpanzee tree is true literally. But he says, science has only taken us this far. Human chimpanzee tree is an assumption of homology. And the assumption of homology, we know of another thing called homoplasy which challenges that. Okay. And what he goes on to say, which is what I'm trying to push out to the public, to say human chimp ancestry is true literally, according to science, is naive. Okay, but wouldn't he also say that it's that it is and, and it is what, the conclusion best supported by the evidence? What he, if you believe I think he would well, say that. Hang on. If you believe and you come from a world view of naturalism, yes. Uh, well, okay, I, Meaning I don't think, I don't there's think he'd make that assumption. There's something beyond the science. No, and no, I, I think he, he'd probably come from the perspective of let, let's not assume kind of let, let, let's be no. agnostic as to whether there's a, a divine Sober, being. Michael Lewis, all these philosophers of science and philosophers of biology, they agree. Philosophical naturalism, not saying it's methodological. Sure. But if philosophical naturalism was true, then something like the Darwinian history of life would have to be true as a matter of logic. Yeah, okay, sure. But like, and, and he, so he, therefore, he, if someone happens to be a philosophical naturalist and they're doing methodological naturalism, they conflate the two because one is science and one is the worldview that they hold. Okay, but for, for, he, do he, you see the problem? Uh, no, no, okay, can you repeat that? What's the, where's the, where's the problem? The problem is if you hold a view in science, uh, sorry, if you hold a view in your personal belief, a faith, which is what they call naturalism, philosophical naturalism. 
and you're doing methodological naturalism, assuming there's no God, no soul, no nothing, no, no mind, the brain at work, then because of this, you are likely to conflate the two. Like psychologically, you might conflate the two. That might be would. quite likely. Of course, you would. Okay, that, that's that, a, that's a potential pit, pitfall. And, and, and how much of a problem is that for someone who doesn't subscribe to philosophical naturalism? A big problem. It, it, no, it probably wouldn't. It probably wouldn't be. A, well, like, it, it probably wouldn't be a problem because, like, in in his uh, a book which I've just started reading, which is uh, basically about this question of, uh, you know, uh, is it more? Is there is there better evidence, and and is the uh, quality of the evidence uh, better for? Uh, 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 it's um, I've only just started reading. I can't, can't quite remember the title, but um, but basically he goes through kind of from in a very rigorous like first principles way, kind of is is the most sound rational conclusion uh, of the evidence that uh, kind of uh, humans and chimps share a common ancestor or or, or, or a creationist narrative. Sure, you're talking about the book Evidence in Evolution. Just published by Cambridge University. It's got like yes. this, uh, the sand dunes on the cover. Yeah, yeah, right? Cambridge, yeah. Now, in that book, if you go to the chapter where it speaks about instrumentalism and scientific realism, and you go into the different discussions about that, he's very nuanced. And the view that I hold, and the view which I want to educate everyone on, is actually his view, which is you could be somebody who believes in God, who doesn't take it to be literally true human chimpanzee history, take out the populistic framework with assumptions, with disputes, and the other side, if they happen to be philosophical naturalists alongside methodological naturalists, and they want to accept it, as long as you are clear that you accepting this is not just purely due to science, but you have to make a leap of faith beyond that, I have no problem. Okay. So I'm not really saying anything different to what he's saying. Uh, okay. And in fact, I mean, that book is one of the inspirations for me doing a lot of the sort of things that I'm doing now, because his view is, I, although he's an atheist and although he, um, you know, he, I don't have, you know, he's not Muslim or anything, I appreciate that he's being very honest about the evidence and the nature of the evidence. I mean, and, and, he, and he also says that the evidence is firmly in favor of the, uh, you know, uh, human. He also says that the evidence is, you know, available evidence is firmly in favor of humans and chimps having Under certain assumptions. Okay, okay but there's it no, depends there's, how justified. There, there's no, there's no place in that book where he unequivocally says human chimp ancestry is supported by the evidence full stop. Uh, it's, it's, no, he says, he says, he says, what he, th he says what, that almost word for word what, in, the, in the introduction. You'd have to read the whole thing because in the end, where he speaks about human chimp ancestry, he says to say it's true literally is naive. At best, it's based on a probabilistic framework which has assumptions. Uh, okay, okay, but like that's the same with all science, though. Sorry, that's the same with all science stuff. It's based exactly. on probabilistic. Exactly. Uh, okay, but we, we but like let's adopt the same standard that we apply for like um, you know medicine you, or you, that sort of thing. Do you believe that scientific anti-realism or instrumentalism is a valid view in the philosophy of science? I, I don't know what that means. Okay, do you believe in scientific realism? I, I don't know what that means. Okay, so you haven't read the book because that's what the book speaks about. You have two yeah, things yeah, here. Have, yeah, have scientific realism or scientific anti-realism, also known as instrumentalism. You are still here. Now, if somebody is a scientific realist, then yes, they would say what science says is true. Now, what makes more sense is scientific instrumentalism, which is what I hold, which is what a lot of philosophers hold, and which is what I think is a rational view to hold. Now, if you hold the view of scientific realism, of course, Somebody's going to say, yes, it's true literally. If you hold the view of scientific instrumentalism, you'll say it's an instrument and it's, the, uh, it's something that we use to try and arrive at new knowledge, but that's all it is. Doesn't it, doesn't it show you kind so of, doesn't, doesn't it show you what, like, uh, what's most likely and most well supported by the evidence? Clearly not, because this is a philosophical discussion, not a scientific discussion. One thing which is clear, genetics, anatomy, biochemistry, it is underdetermined. Uh, sorry, scientific realism or instrumentalism is underdetermined by genetics. You cannot prove this one or that one by looking at the science itself. It's a philosophical principle for which you have to go back to first principles, yeah. which is outside of science. Okay, H how does this relate to what you told the uh, Muslim questioner who asked you a question Good. about about humans and chimps? Because it Good. sounded like what you told him was accept uh, evolution as a working model, don't try and be a, like an American creationist. And then it sounded like you said, but, you know, believe in that the Quran's the perfect word of God at the same time. Sure. What I basically said to him is this. I said to him, 
accept Darwinian evolution for what it is scientifically, not in a popular uh, perspective. From a popular perspective, it's true literally. So I said, don't accept it as that. Accept it as a proper, something based on a probabilistic framework, which has assumptions, which has disputes. Okay. Accept, accept it, it as the best supported. Accept uh, it as a valid. No, accept it as valid science. Full stop. Now, the Quran can go against valid science. It doesn't mean the Quran's wrong, because valid science over time can change. And I gave him the example of the eternal universe. Okay. The yes. static state theory. Sure. The static state theory conflicted with the Quran 70, 80 years ago. Today, the Big Bang correlates with the Quran, apparently. But in the future, the Big Bang may be replaced by another eternal universe. Isn't it, isn't it rational to believe in, or to have a higher degree of belief in what is more supported by evidence than wait, 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 what on. is, when than you, what when is when you less say supported evidence, by evidence? When you say evidence, you have to be clear what you mean. If you come from a scientific, realistic point of view, realism point of view, then for you, the evidence is going to be science. But if you come from instrumentalism, you're going to take other sources of knowledge like testimony and deductive logic and other uh, introspection as other sources of knowledge too. So fundamentally, this discussion is about first principles, which is not to do with science. Okay. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm open to like, I'm, I wouldn't, I don't know how introspection could be a, uh, I'm not sure about introspection as a source of evidence. Introspection is like, not science. But like, uh, I know, uh, testimony or like kind of testimony, histori yeah. historical evidence. Yeah, that could like, be evidence, sure. Yeah, but like, okay, but like. You know, even, even mathematics is not science. Yeah, of logic course. is yeah, not science. Yeah, of course. Logic yeah. is based on science, uh, mathematics and logic. Yes. Yeah, also, sure. values like right and wrong. Scientifically, from a methodological naturalistic point of view, objective morality does not exist. But like Darwin himself, Darwin was a methodological naturalist, but he believed in morals which exist, which exist in real, which is why he actually spoke about them. So. Being a methodological naturalist does not mean you're a philosophical naturalist. Sure. And this okay. fundamentally, this whole discussion boils down to first principles, what you believe to be right and wrong, what you believe to be the roots of knowledge. And fundamentally, this is nothing to do with science. Okay. Aren't, aren't, you, aren't you asking that, that Muslim student to accept uh, kind of um, evolution as sound, uh, uh, the, uh, accept kind of uh, evolutionary biology or in particular like humans and chimps having a common ancestor as sound science and well supported by scientific evidence and then at Based the same time you should believe in a counter narrative. No, it's not a counter narrative. Is, like, isn't Adam and Eve a counter narrative? No. It's like opposite to um, humans and chimps having a common ancestor. Science has never claimed certainty in this regard of human chimp ancestry. Okay. These two views contradict each other, but if you take one as valid science, which is at best probabilistic based on assumptions with disputes, okay. and the other Quran, okay, okay. Yeah, that, you, okay, you take as a word of God. Now, somebody can outside of you say, you have something which is based on a probabilistic framework with assumptions, with disputes, and you have the Quran. Why, and this is a valid question, do you go with one root of knowledge and not the other? There's two ways of answering it. One way of answering it is, I'm not going to go with either. At best, science is still probabilistic. So it doesn't give you that. Or you can say, in terms of its foundation, science doesn't give you certainty, but these are the reasons I believe Quran to be the true word of God. Okay. So you can have different approaches of doing it. What I was showing him is epistemic weighing. Epistemic weighing we even do in other sciences. For example, general relativity fundamentally contradicts quantum mechanics. They both can't be true literally. So for somebody to come along and say, I'm going to reject this and accept this, isn't it better to say, I'm going to accept both as valid science, but I'm going to take both of their epistemic weights. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to conceptually teach people epistemology and about how they should view evidence and how they should view conflicts in evidence. And okay. this this discussion fundamentally is not a scientific one. Okay. Isn't isn't the uh, example of uh, kind of general what, what statement was wrong. Well, so so yeah, what, isn't the example of uh, general relativity and quantum mechanics? Sorry, 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 sorry. Like any, any scientist would believe that uh, huh? um, all, all physics, kind of physics the, main, the mainstream oh, of physicists, believe that um, kind of both of these models aren't, aren't complete and will change in the future. And you know, like the, the, the fact that they kind of don't, don't uh, the fact that they don't resolve means that they're both of them kind of aren't correct. And whereas, like the question of whether humans and chimps have a common ancestor, that's something that um, kind of like uh, it, it is. It isn't like known already that like. That, that question 
uh, the, the, the current answer to that question provided by science is 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 wrong and will and will need to be changed or refined in the future. It's a kind of much a narrower binary question than. Um, Are you saying the epistemic weight of general relativity is is lower than that of human chimpanzees? No, no, no. I'm saying, well, in a way, because we know we know that like. We know that general relativity. Uh, well, we have good evidence that general relativity will have to change, because, for example, like um, quantum mechanics. Uh, yeah, because of quantum mechanics, and also the fact that like it gives uh, infin it gives predictions of infinities at black holes. That's normally a re that's normally a shows a a, 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 a a limit to the model. Um, yeah, that, I didn't know that. yeah. Uh, so like we, we we already we, uh, sorry. Okay, that's a problem. Right? Yeah, yeah. But whereas whereas the question of uh, you know. Uh, uh, do, do humans and chimps have a common ancestor? That's just like a, a, a yes or no question. And like, you no, know, biologists already kind of feel like, we're, no. we've gathered like kind of all these clues that strongly kind of suggest um, that no, but remember, the answer remember is yes. Those things are, look, I'm not saying there's an alternative. Let's forget human pig ancestry. That's like so fringe. I'm not saying there's an alternative. What I'm saying is, at best, according to them, is based on probabilistic framework assumptions disputes. Leave yes. it there. Okay, but like, what then, you want? Look, what we, you, we, should, we shouldn't like. Have, what you want us we to should, do? We shouldn't like have no, but James, not believe what you want in, us to do in science is, in general. You want though. us to take that leap of faith? The thing is, all I'm pointing out is it is a leap of faith. No, no. What we what we should really ideally do is have a high degree of faith. You know. So if if, if you like, if you have like a. Uh, so now we're not talking about science anymore. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, because we're talking about first principles, and we're talking about that first principle dictating the way that you look at the world. <coughs> Because if you start off as an atheist, and that's your first principle, something like Darwinian evolution has to be true as a matter of logic. But if you start off as a theist, I'm an you're not going to come to that same conclusion. Yeah. So fundamentally, all of this discussion boils down to first principles, which boils down to whether you believe in God or not, which fundamentally itself is not even a rational thing, it's based on fitrah which is the natural position. Some people want to accept it, some people don't want to accept it. Okay, well, you, I mean, you, you don't need to kind of like make that assumption at the beginning of whether you, there is a God, there isn't a God. You can like, you know, remain agnostic on that front. Or no, like but that, that's according to your worldview. According to my worldview, that, okay, for example, myself, I was never an atheist. Okay. I, I doubted Islam many times when I was at university, but I, I, did, I never could imagine there is no God. So that may be your position, but you can't import that position onto me. Okay. Uh, My you, first principle was there's always a God. Okay. Did, Even did, if I wasn't Muslim, I still believe in God. Okay. Did, did you know what a God was when you were in your mother's womb? No. Okay. Did you know what? Did you know what a God was one second after you exited your mother's womb? No. Okay. So did, were you always a Muslim? What well, we believe, we were always in a state of fitrah, natural state. Muslim is different. So if somebody believes. There's one creator who's worthy of worship. They're in a natural state, but they're not a Muslim. Okay. Right? So all children are in a fitrah state. Now, I never came to a point where I'm like, okay, now I start to believe in God. For me, the belief in God was just true. So okay. the fact is this, your first principle, you have to acknowledge it's the first principle. Don't take your first principle and try and say that's the tabula rasa, that's the status quo. Okay. Because you have a first principle which is different to mine. But how, how, how do you, I mean, how, how do you justify kind of believing that you had fit, fit I mean, I, what, what, so what, what does fitra mean if when, fitra. When, you, when you first come out of the womb, you have no idea what God is, and then at yeah, some point you find out what God is, you must at some point start believing in God. And whereas, like, you know, one second after you exit the womb, you yeah. aren't believing in God yeah. at that point. So we believe deep down in all, in all human beings, when human beings are in trouble or when human beings have a type of experience, a spiritual experience, the belief in God is directly in the heart and it just becomes uncovered. It doesn't enter the heart, it just becomes uncovered. So the okay. fact of the matter is this, when somebody starts off with, I'm not sure if there's a God, they're not starting on some equal platform, they're starting on an agnostic first principle. But when someone like myself, when I'm starting with the first principle of the fitrah, it's not an argument for God. It's just a position from which you spring. Now, all of the arguments for God's existence or the Quran, they only are there to remind you of what you already know is true. They're not there to actually give you an abstract argument for God's existence, abstract argument for the Quran. Likewise, 
for an atheist who doesn't want to believe in God, his first principle is there is no God. No amount of argumentation is gonna or proof is gonna convince him if he doesn't want sure. to believe. Like, should, but like, shouldn't people try and uh, make as few assumptions about, or a, as few as few kind of un, unjustified assumptions in their worldview as possible? No, but it's not an assumption. It's a position you begin with. Okay. An assumption is different. Okay. So, for example, I'm gonna make the assumption that I don't know the Earth is a certain uh, circumference, and I'm gonna try and test against that. First principles are different. For example, morals come from first principles. Either you believe in objective morality or you don't. There's nothing in the world, there's no philosophical argument or there's no scientific data that can convince you to go from morals that are objective to subjective. There's none. No, but you, you, you either you, begin you, with they exist no, or but, they don't. But, but you could not adopt a position on that. You could say, I'm not sure whether objective which is morals a position, exist. Which is a position. Is, isn't, it, isn't it a less closed position than saying but that's there an, are objective morals, no, but that, there are that, not objective but, morals. No, but that's I'm an, not sure whether there are No, but that's morals. an assumption because a solipsist who denies all reality, he can say, my first principle is, there is no reality. I can turn around and say, I'm not a solipsist. My first principle is, there is reality. He's gonna say, look at me, I'm more cool, like I'm being more unsure. Well, I'm gonna say you're being an idiot, right? So first principles is not a thing you, you argue from, it's actually sorry, not a place you argue towards, it's something you argue from. Okay, but, but like the example of a, a solipsist or thinking that there isn't a reality, you can like, you know, that, that's something that's more easy to sort of show as a ridiculous belief. No, you can't. You can never disprove a solipsis ever. Well... Um, you know no, that. No, but like, um, so like, there's I think, therefore I am. So you, you, you know personally that you exist because like, at, at, at least you're experiencing something. So there must be at least some apparatus with which you're experiencing something. Yeah, what something. does the hard solipsis say? What? A hard solipsist would say, I'm the only thing. Okay, but like... So, Which is kind of like, I think okay. therefore I am, so only I exist. Uh, but, but like, is, isn't that a solipsist making an assumption as well? That's a, a of course he is, that's yeah. the point. Okay, okay so, but, like, but then like... Well, what, what, it, sounded, so, it sounded like so, you were using the example so of a solipsist in order to kind of make it seem as though uh, being agnostic or making less am, assumptions is, is the same thing or as I, silly. I am, I am, because what I'm saying is they're both positions. But isn't one of some position making an assumption and the other uh, position not making an assumption? They both are. Okay. Well, so so one one is assuming like there is there is there, saying, there is no know. reality apart from yeah. me. Or the so, that's hard solipsism. Or you could be like a type of soft, soft soft solipsist and say maybe the world is not real. Maybe nothing exists. Right. Uh, so <laughs> either way, what I'm trying to say is this: he has a first principle. And the agnostic is not some cool guy who's balanced and who's like just on the right tip, right? He is also making an assumption. Okay, but like, I mean, so it's starting from a first principle. Okay, well, uh, like, I mean, surely, like, we can, we, we, we can like show like sort of that this is what this explanation is slightly wanting though, because we can consider a slightly different example, which might be like, um, I know, uh, if if someone says, uh, you know, there there are two mountains over two kilometers high, uh, kind of within 500 meters of each other in North Korea, kind of, unless you have like sort of some geographical background knowledge to that, kind of one person would be assuming more if they say, yes, that's true. Another person would also be making assume, an assumption if they say, uh, like, um, uh, no, that's false. Yeah, like the, per the, per the person is like making the, the least assumptions and it's like uh, probably I'd say in the most kind of uh, rational perspective that, is to uh, say like, I, I have I have no evidence for or against yeah, uh, sure, this, that, this. James, so I, a, I can't I can't adopt a position on whether it's true or not. Sure, James, that's a disanalogy because that's a physical assumption. First principles are metaphysical first principles. Okay. They're different. We're not talking about someone saying, I'm assuming that on the other side of that tree, all the leaves are purple. We're not talking about some physical, we're talking about metaphysical things. Look, God, objective morals, reality, these are metaphysical things. Okay. Why, why well, objective what's, morals what's the are, uh, are metaphysics? Sorry? Objective, why, why is objective morals are, are uh, metaphysics? I don't understand what you're saying. What you said, you're talking about values. Values, yeah, that, that's, moral that's values. Yeah. 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 metaphysics, not physical world. Yeah. You said why? Yeah, yeah. Why values? Values is, is a part of the physical world. Because from a purely physical perspective, morals don't exist. 
It's that colour perception. Is that tree actually green? No, it's not. Green's what bounces back. So morals are what we export onto the world. They don't extract them from the world. For, for subject to people who believe subject to morality. So I'm gonna go to James. I'm gonna go to Craig. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna speak to you again as well. Yeah, yeah, there are approaches to do that. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Come Man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. I refuse. I want a red flag. This Douglas and black people who are against all odds still manage to free black people from what they were going through. This is what I'm interested in. So, why, why did Abraham leave? As I said before, America was the new rising industrial power in the world. 